All right, so sometimes there may be low light, but there's never no light. And as long as you have some light, you have a video to create. You just gotta be a little bit creative. And also low light doesn't always pertain to shooting or being in complete and total darkness like this. Low light can be dawn or dusk or in your home or in a bowling alley or pool hall or wherever you are where there, the light is limited. Let me show you guys a few examples of when I was shooting in some low light situations and we'll talk about what I did and the tips and tricks that I take when shooting in these type of environments. All right, cool. So now that we are back at the crib, we could talk a little bit more about getting the most out of any camera in low light situations. To be honest, I wasn't even gonna make this video because it's not a video about a camera or a lens or gear in general. And I didn't know if it would be interesting enough to the audience that watches these videos. But in my opinion, shooting in low light can be kind of daunting and sometimes overwhelming. And when I first started, and even now sometimes, I wish that there were things out there where people talked about their personal approach to doing some of these things in filmmaking and photography that doesn't necessarily involve gear and just someone's personal preference in the way that they do things. So maybe this will help somebody out there today, maybe it won't, but I'm going to make the video anyway and talk about the things that I do personally when I approach low light situations when I'm taking photos or making videos. And also disclaimer, I'm no professional when it comes to lighting. These are just my personal ways that I go about approaching low light situations when I'm taking photos or making videos. And these things help me and my filmmaking. It doesn't mean that it's gonna help everybody in their filmmaking. It doesn't mean that everybody has to do it. These are not rules. These are just things that I do when I go out and shoot in low light. All right. All right. So number one, like I was saying earlier, there's always low light, but there's never no light. The world around us is full of lights and we always have lights, no matter what the case may be, whether that's from the sun, the moon, street lights, your phone, flames, whatever the case may be, there's always some form of light around. And although we are not in control of some of those lights, we can still use some of those lights to our advantage. I personally use the light that's available to my advantage to be as creative as I can. For example, and these two things may be considered cliches, but I'm not too good for cliches. I actually love cliches. I embrace them. But when I was shooting with Jade on his roof in New York, I knew that I wanted his face to be lit up. And the only way that we can do that because I didn't have a light on me was using a phone. So that way we just used a light off the phone to light his face and then let the background lights do all the rest of the work. Another example was when I was in a field by myself and I used the lighter, the light from the lighter to light my face while I was lighting the cigarette. And I think these two things are very good examples of using the things that we use every single day to light your videos. But there's street lights, there's headlights from cars, there's lights inside of buildings and restaurants and stores and using those lights can always be used to your advantage. I feel like these lights were made for everybody to use them. So use them. And that one was kind of obvious, but I have to get it out the way. So number two, embrace the grain and the noise in your footage. Now I know it's been preached thoroughly throughout the filmmaking world and photography world that you should do things to get the least amount of grain and noise in your image. I've mentioned it before and I'll mention it again for as long as I have to, but the clean and pristine and clinical approach to filmmaking may work for some people and that may be the things that people want out of their films, but it shouldn't be the standard for filmmaking overall. And a lot of people preach about doing things within your camera to get the least amount of grain and noise in your image, especially in low light situations, which is fine. 
and doing things to get the most out of your camera to avoid these things is cool but it definitely shouldn't discourage someone from creating something because of that for example my fx3 has dual base isos which is 640 and 12800 which is kind of unfair because that's a very high base iso but if i'm being honest i shoot at everything in between 640 and 12800 if i want to or if i have to or if i feel like i have to i'll even go past 12800 if i have to because if I want to shoot something and I want it to be seen, then I'm going to do the best things that I can do for it to be seen. So yeah, bump the ISO. Don't worry about your image falling apart or having grain or noise in it because in my opinion, that's kind of perfectly normal. Clearly, it can get distracting at some point, but there's denoisers and all type of stuff that you can do within post to get rid of some of that stuff anyway. So me personally, I keep the grain and noise in my footage because I think it looks good and i like it and i embrace it and that's what i like in my image personally so i keep it i've also said this before but i try to be perfectly imperfect or my version of perfection and sometimes it's not what's considered perfect but that's okay too the next thing that i would say is don't be afraid of shadows if you're shooting something in low light shadows are to be expected but me personally i love shadows and again i know that has been pushed so many times and it's been beat into our heads that everything needs to be perfectly exposed and the details need to be seen everywhere but i'm here to tell you right now that that's just not true now i know some people may not like the look of that and that's also totally fine but i wouldn't say that should discourage somebody from shooting something or not wanting to put something out or not liking something because the shadows are too dark also if you're shooting in low light situations anyway it's probably expected that you know some of the shadows are going to be a little bit on the darker side but i love shadows i like to make silhouettes out of shadows because i feel like that's something creative and interesting to look at and also i feel like when you embrace shadows it draws attention to the light that is available but i also like things a little bit darker anyway because it just has a sense of like this moodiness and mysteriousness that i personally love but anyway yeah not everything needs to be perfectly dynamic i personally have never been in a habit of trying to make everything perfect because if i did that i probably would never make anything at all and personally when i go out to shoot whether it's light outside or dark outside i'm always looking for the parts of an image that looks the best in terms of contrast so yeah embrace the shadows go to the dark side so anyway yeah this one is probably kind of obvious but i'm gonna say it anyway because i feel like it ties into everything else that i've already said but that would be to get as close as possible to the light that is available. Now, I feel like if you've ever been in a pinch for light, you have done this, whether it was getting really close to a window or getting really close to a light source or getting really close to the only light that is available. For example, when I was shooting with my homies at the pool hall, that pool hall is very, very, very dark. And the only light that's in there is the lights that's over the pool tables. So you can only really get good light in there if you're on the pool table or if someone's sitting really close to the pool table. But I like this example the most because I feel like everything that I talked about goes back into this image. For one, getting as close to the light as possible is happening. Embracing the shadows is happening since it's so dark in there and there's no light on the other side of the pool table is creating a cool contrast between lights and darks of the image and half of his face is dark and the other half is lit up there's also some cool neon signs in the background and, and placing them each where i place them makes the image looks a little bit more 3d ish which goes back to using the points of light that we do have available to be as creative as possible and also i cranked the iso for this because it's definitely a lot darker in there than it looks so yeah honestly i use all of these things when creating videos especially when it's a little bit dark outside or inside. And all these things are the things I've been doing that doesn't involve gear to kind of get more out of my camera and more out of the image that I'm trying to show you guys. And honestly, it's just some tips and tricks and things that I do. Some of these things you may already know, some of these things you may already do, and that's perfectly fine. But I definitely wanted to make a video about this for the people who are just like me or were just like me who feel a little bit overwhelmed about the thought of shooting at night because I never used to shoot past like 8 p.m. because that's too dark for me and I didn't want to deal with lights and maybe buying lights. Lights are expensive. Sometimes you can't even afford lights, but there's so many things that we can do without lights and for free and doesn't involve getting new gear or a certain lens or a certain camera to do. And you can get something that looks really good and really cool. So I just wanted to, I don't know, I guess talk about that. So I did. But anyway, yeah, that's probably going to wrap up this video. I appreciate you guys for stopping by and checking in and tapping in, man. It's always and gratefully appreciated. I can't really 
say that enough. I love y'all. If you're not subscribed to the video, please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. If you're already subscribed, I'm not talking to you because you already did what you had to do, and I appreciate you for that. Also, like the video, uh, ring the bell, leave a comment if you feel inclined to. It would truly, truly, truly be appreciated. But with that being said, man, I'm gonna get up out of here. I'm gonna go do some shit, man. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Let's get it. You know the vibes. Let's get it.